You guys stomp your feet like that? And let's clap together. That's it. Keep it going. Let's sing this little light of mine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I right, keep clapping now. Sounds good. Huh. Everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine. Yes, everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. That sounds so good. That's called clapping on the back beat. All right, sing this real quiet with me now. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Yes, even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hey kids, you may be wondering why I'm holding this house or wearing this construction hat, but it has to do with our story today. And we're going to talk about a guy named Nehemiah and how God works everything out for those who love him. Hope you enjoy. It's a perfect day in Galilee. This is News Channel 7, the Galilean Gazette, the holiest news you'll find on your tablet. I'm Kitty Couric. And I'm Timmy Allen. And kids, last week we started back And I'm Bob. And he is Bob. He's Bob, and of course he's Timmy. Timothy, what are you doing? You're so well, busy. I'm very busy right very now. Busy. We can all see that you're busy, but what are, you, what are you doing? We're trying to do a show. I heard that we were talking about building something in our story today, and I thought it sounded like a great idea, so I'm drawing up some plans to build myself a house. Huh. Wait, there's, there's no way you can build a house. There are several things you need to build a house. I mean, first off, you need experience or someone who has building house experience with you. Um, I agree with Bob. That's like, you need to know, like, Timmy, you need to know what you're doing in order to build a house. Yeah, and you need machinery too. Backhoes, dump trucks, cement trucks, excavators, skid loaders, bulldozers, cranes, and that's just to name a few of them. And don't forget tools. You don't even have any tools. You need a hammer, tape measure, like the spread squares, levels, utility knives, clamps, everything, drills. Oh. Do you have any of that? Uh, not yet, but I can put all those in my Babylon cart and get it in three days. You cannot get the machinery, though, through Babylon. All this talk about building reminds me of our story. We are in the book of Nehemiah in the Old Testament today. We come to this story and the city of Jerusalem has been destroyed. The latest reports show that the walls have been knocked down and the people have been carried away from their homes. They have to live in another country to serve other people there. A man named Nehemiah heard that his hometown was quite a mess, and he was so heartbroken. Thinking of the story and our experiences in life, have you ever found out something that made you feel really happy, though? Maybe it was something that made you smile all day long. Or how about the opposite? Have you ever received news that made you sad and you couldn't stop thinking about it? Maybe you felt so upset that everyone around you noticed how sad you were. Maybe they even asked you about it. Like in today's story, we're going to learn about a man named Nehemiah who had that sad feeling and how our loving God made a way to help him rebuild. We will see that God works all things out for those who love him. 
Let's turn it over to my cousin, Bunny Couric, and see what's going on. Bunny, where are you? It's true. I'm here in the land of Babylonia, and I'm hopping around the castle of the king of Persia, and I'm hopping around looking for a guy named Nehemiah. Hi, I'm Nehemiah. hey -o. Nehemiah worked in a distant land, and he had an important job in the kingdom. He was the king's cupbearer. One day, Nehemiah's brother came for a visit and told him some very sad news about the town Nehemiah called home. Brother, I have such bad news, brother. Our hometown, brother, is a mess, and the people who survived the exile, brother, are coming home, brother. The gates they have burned down with fire, brother, and the wall all down. Oh, Lord. The God of heaven, please listen to me. Our people have forgotten you and our city is a mess. Please, I, can, I confess the sins we have committed against you. We have not done right. Please remember us. Let us be set by, right by you. Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this, your servants who delight in your name. Give us your success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. Thank you, brother. Nehemiah went to deliver a cup to the king. The king saw that Nehemiah looked so sad. And the king said to Nehemiah, Thanks for the cup. Hey, you look a little different. What is the matter? Your face looks so sad. Why does your face look so sad when you're not ill? This can be nothing but sadness of the heart. May the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad? when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire. What is it that you want? I prayed to the God of heaven, if it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in his sight, let him send me to the city of Judah, where my ancestors are buried so that I can rebuild it. The king wanted to help Nehemiah, and he said he could go back to his hometown. He even helped him with the things that he would need. Travel papers, so everyone knew that he was on a special mission from the king. The king blessed him with a few good men to keep him safe in his travels. And he even gave him some wood to build all the walls and gates. Is that amazing? God had answered all his prayers and gave him everything he needed to get back to home to rebuild. Well, you know what? I'm going to turn it over to Baba Wawa to finish up this wonderful story. I can't wait to see how this ends. Thanks, buddy. Isn't she doing a great job? I am here in Jerusalem. Nehemiah has arrived, and he saw that there was a lot of work to be done. He prayed, and he asked God to help him. You see the trouble we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins, and its gates have been burned with fire. Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, and we will no longer be in disgrace. God has been gracious to us. Let us rebuild! The people were so happy to start building their hometown back together, but it was not long that the people around the city made trouble for them. They made fun of them and they tried to scare them. Sometimes the people working had to defend themselves. They kept a spear in one hand and their tools to work in the other. It took the people 52 days to finish all the repairs. The people worshiped and they thanked God. All the people knew that it was God who helped them build the walls. It was such a wonderful, amazing story. God works all things out with those who love him. Let's head over to Shelly Grace. She's interviewing Nehemiah. I can't believe it. I can't wait to hear what they're talking about. Hello everyone, welcome to my show today where I am here interviewing the one and the only Nehemiah. He is from our story today, and let me tell you, this story has been so amazing. Welcome to my show, Nehemiah. Is it OK 
okay if I ask you a few questions? Right. I know that it's okay if I ask you a few questions. Okay. My first question to you is this. Were you a little nervous about going to the king and looking so sad? I tell you that you might have been nervous going to the king every time you went to him because kings can be so mean and temperamental. But this time you were sad, but you had prayed before you went. So you had God on your side. And when we pray, big, big things can happen. Like it did for you today. And he gave you everything that you needed in order to build back Jerusalem. Isn't that great? My next question to you is this. When you got back to your hometown of Jerusalem and saw all the work that you needed to have done, how did you feel? Boy. I bet you felt a little concerned about everything, but you took great care of how you handled everything. You even snuck around at night, looking over the city and riding around, surveying everything that needed to be done, like walls and calculating all the needs that you would have. Then you told the people of Jerusalem the plan to put the walls back together and you repaired it all on the goodness of God. And you worked together with the team to build back your hometown. Even when others came against you, you trusted God to see you through. Well, I'll tell you what. God works things out for all those who love him. And that's the best news of all. Let me turn it back over to Kimmy, Timmy, and Bob and see what they have to say. Welcome back. Kids, I don't know about you, but that was an amazing story of the great love and protection that God has for us. I mean, it was good to see that Nehemiah had concerns for God's family, and he prayed for them to be set right with God. Exactly. I couldn't agree more. Uh, Bob, do you have any idea where Timmy is? I'm not sure. Has, has anyone seen him? Um, I heard he's running late. Uh, you know, you had to get a mouse or something? Uh, we, we had a bad connection. I could barely hear him. A mouse? I don't think that could be right. Do you think, do, I mean, do you think anything about a mouse? No, but mouse and house rhyme together, so he may have said something about the house he was building. Mm, that makes sense. Uh, let's continue. Maybe he'll show up soon enough. Whoa, whoa, whoa. hold the broadcast. Um, hold the broadcast. All right. Sorry I'm late. I was building my house, and it took me quite a while. Timmy, that... Is your house it's impressive? There is no way that took you all day to build. Well, it, it took longer than today. I have been working on it for a week, and in our story today, it took workers 52 days to rebuild Jerusalem, and my house only took a week. Um, you know what I liked about our story today? Was when the people tried to stop them from building the walls and the gates, Nehemiah kept listening to God. Yeah, he didn't let them get discouraged, and he didn't let them stop building. Yeah, you know, they worked as a team to get things done, too. So next time, Timmy, I would love to work with you on your project. Great. We can accomplish more than when we, when we work together. Lastly, kids, God did more than give them the things they needed to rebuild. He forgave them, and he restored the people back to their homes. Nehemiah got to be a big part of this. When he went back to Jerusalem, he had the hard task of organizing and leading the people and fixing the walls and gates. But he knew he needed the help of God to accomplish the goal. Remember, kids, when we have big goals, we can pray, and we know that God works all things out for those who love him. Well, I think that's about it. So from all of us here at News Channel 7, the Galilean Gazette, have a perfect day. Hey kids, welcome to Words to Treasure for this week. I'm going to go through it one time slower to give you the gist of it, and then we'll go through it a little bit quicker. All right. Know that God works all things together for those who love him according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. All right, now let's do it a little bit quicker. Know that God works all things together for those who love him according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28.
Thanks kids, have a good week. Hi kids, welcome to Enlightened Time with Miss Shelley. This week, you kids are gonna need to grab a couple different size cups, a bigger one and maybe a smaller one. You're gonna wrap them in foil, put some stickers or some jewels on the side. This is to remind us about the story this week, how Nehemiah was a cupbearer to the king, but Nehemiah went on and did amazing things, the amazing things that God asked him to do. So we hope that you guys have a great week. That was a great story on how God works everything out for those who love him. Hope you enjoyed. Yes, after 52 days, I finally completed my house. Now I can have my housewarming party.